In this video, I'm going to show you my tried and true method for getting perfect cutouts in Pixelmator Pro because there's a very specific path you should be following if you want super sharp cutouts. Let's go. So here's the image we're going to be working with today. These are two Mac minis that I'm comparing in an upcoming video. And what I wanted to do is cut out these two Macs off this background. Now these Macs have sharp edges. So at first glance, it seems like this would be really easy, but there's not a lot of contrast in this shot between the background and the subject. So it's actually a little bit more difficult than you may think. Now I want to first start by showing you what you may be doing wrong when you're trying to cut out objects in Pixelmator Pro. So I'm first going to reach for this button here. This is the remove background button. And so what's supposed to happen is with the click of a button, you can cut your objects off the background. But if we look closely here, you can see how messy this cutout is around the perimeter. It doesn't look sharp. And what you'll also notice is that this is a destructive process. I've actually removed the background from my original layer. You can see that here in my layers pane. I'm going to undo that by hitting Command Z. And I wanna show you a new feature that Pixelmator just rolled out a few weeks ago, which is that if you hit this icon here at the top of your layers panel, you can hide the background. So again, it's going to go through that same process, but this time it's applied a mask. So that means if I disable the mask in my layers panel, the background isn't really gone. It's not destructive. But again, we're having the same challenge. This is not a clean cutout. So I'm going to undo that as well. Now, if you're like me and you're unhappy with that cutout, you might reach for the quick selection tool, which allows you to hold down your mouse button and drag your cursor over the object you want to select. And it's going to start highlighting it in yellow. And when I release my mouse button, I can see my selection. Now, obviously, the quick selection tool has accidentally grabbed part of the background. So I'm gonna hold down the option key to switch from adding to subtracting from my selection. And then I can temporarily subtract from my selection. Let's do the same on this Big Mac Mini. So I can have more than one selection at a time. I'm going to hit the select and mask button. And now the background has turned yellow and my devices are regular color. This indicates to me I'm actually gonna be cutting away the background and leaving these two devices. Now on the overlay, I like to change the default from yellow to red. I just think it's easier to see. And you can see while the quick selection tool has done a better job than the remove background tools, it's not perfect. I can clean this up by using the roundness slider. And basically what this does is it smooths out the image. But you can see on this smaller device, I'm still not getting a perfect cutout. So I'm going to cancel out of this and hit Command D to deselect those items. And I'm going to reach for my secret weapon, which is the magnetic selection tool. I love the magnetic selection tool. I'm going to zoom in on my frame, hold down the space bar to grab the frame and reposition my view, release the space bar to go back to my magnetic selection tool. And now I'm just going to click on the edge of this Mac Mini and I'm going to draw around my device. And I'm going to start at the point where it was hardest for the quick selection tool to detect. And I just wanna show you, I'm gonna move my cursor around. The magnetic selection tool is actually attracted to your subject. All you have to do is hover it around the edge of the subject you're trying to detect. And whenever you feel like it's getting a little wayward, you just click to make another control point. It's not as fast as the quick selection tool, but it's way more accurate, especially in a situation like this one, where it's having a hard time differentiating between my subject and the background. So once we get past this brick background, the magnetic selection tool is going to be a lot faster because it's going to have a much easier time detecting my subject. And remember, anywhere you feel like it's getting off track, you just click and make a point. And if you accidentally make a point, just hover your cursor back over that until you get this flag that says remove anchor point. Click again to remove it and try again. While I'm making my selection here, I wanted to let you know that I'm going to be dropping a lot more Pixelmator content on this channel. So if you're interested in learning more about Pixelmator Pro, make sure you subscribe. All right, once we get to the end of our selection, you're going to get this little notification that says finish selection. Just click to close your selection. I'm going to zoom back out of my frame. And again, let's hit select and mask. Now I do, of course, have some jagged edges here, but we know how to fix that. I'm going to dial up that roundness slider. And now we have a much cleaner cutout. We also have some brush tools to help us refine this edge. So right on this side here, I do feel like it's getting a little wide. So let me show you what these brushes do. And some of them are better than others. I'm going to start with the refine edge brush and I'm going to make sure I'm on the subtraction option because I want to subtract from my selection here. 
Let me increase the brush size and show you what the refine brush does. I can just draw over where I feel like the object is getting a little wide and it's going to attempt to refine the shape for me. I find the refine brush tool is a little hit or miss. See, I was kind of making the shape of my device a little wonky. I'm going to undo all that. The next option is the quick selection brush. And I don't think this is going to be the right fit in this situation because it's really just trying to select areas again. And we know it didn't do a perfect job. So I'm instead going to head down to the basic brush, which is just a regular brush. And I'm going to trace here to try to clean that up. Now, because I have the roundness cranked up all the way, it's doing a good job of cleaning that up for me. I think that looks really good. But that's not all you need to know about making selections in Pixelmator Pro. This is another place you could go totally wrong if you don't know what to do next. So I've got my output set to new layer. Let me show you what happens if we're set to new layer and we hit the apply button. Can you see, let me zoom in here. Can you see all that work I did getting that perfect cutout has been ruined. I'm getting this soft, blurry, ugly edge on my cutout. I'm going to add a new layer and just paint in the background to help you better see what I'm talking about. See how messy that looks? Not what we were looking for. So I'm going to undo all this, go back to my magnetic mask selection, select and mask, dial up that roundness. I'm going to have to redo everything I just showed you. And I'm going to just clean up that edge like we did. Perfect. Okay. Now this is really important. You don't want to be on new layer. You want to be on new layer with mask. I'm going to hit apply. And now look, we have a super clean cutout. None of that garbage around the perimeter. And again, my whole image is still here if I disable the mask, but now I've got a super clean mask without a lot of junk around the edges. So when you're trying to go for super precise cutouts in Pixelmator Pro, I would not reach for those automatic one button tools. Put a little bit more elbow grease into it to get that perfect result I know you're looking for. If you guys liked this tutorial, let me know. Give me that thumbs up. What else in Pixelmator Pro do you want to hear about? Thank you so much for hanging out. Here's some other videos I know you're going to love and I'll see you guys again.